muscles of the body, where they originate, where they insert, and the various actions that they perform. Before I get started, I wanted to go over some general basics. And remember that origin of a muscle is going to be the attachment site to the bone that does not move. And the insertion is going to be the attachment site of the bone that does move. Now some of the actions of the various muscles, uh, I'll be talking about flexion and extension. And remember that flexion is the movement that decreases the angle between two parts. And extension is the reverse. Now um, I'll also talk about pronate and supinate. An easy way to remember supinate is cup your hand like you're holding a bowl of soup, and if you dump the soup, that's pronation. Abduction and adduction, remember that adduction is adding to the body, abduction is taking away. Medial rotation is movement towards the midline, so medially rotate would be turning your foot in, laterally rotate would be turning it outward or to the lateral side. And last but not least, when I talk about the mandible and actions of the scapula, I may say elevation and depression. Elevate is bringing up, depression is pulling down. All right, let's get started. Here we're looking at orbicularis oculi. The origin is the medial wall of the orbit, and it encircles the orbit, inserting upon itself. Its main action is closing the eye. Here we're looking at orbicularis oris. It originates in the muscle fibers that surround the opening of the mouth and inserts upon itself encircling the mouth. Its primary action is to close the mouth, to purse the lips, and protrude the lips. The next muscle of the face is the bucinator, labeled here as number 22. It originates on the posterior alveolar processes of the maxilla and the mandible and inserts on orbicularis oris. Its action is compressing the cheek like in blowing or sucking air in. Here we're looking at some muscles of the face. First we'll look at the masseter. It originates on the zygomatic bone of the zygomatic arch and inserts on the ramus of the mandible. Its primary action is to elevate the mandible. It also protrudes the mandible as well. Next, we're looking at the temporalis muscle. It originates on the temporal bone of the cranium and inserts on the coronoid process of the mandible. It acts hand in hand with the masseter in elevating the jaw. Here we're looking at the digastric muscle. It originates on the mastoid process of the temporal bone and attaches here at the mandible via a pulley tendon on the hyoid bone. Its primary action is depression of the mandible, so it works in conjunction with the masseter and temporalis and that they elevate the mandible and the digastric depresses the mandible. Another primary muscle of the head and neck is the sternocleoid mastoid muscle. It originates in the manubrium of the sternum and the clavicle and inserts on the mastoid process of the temporal bone. It performs various actions like rotates the head towards the opposite side, it flexes the head, and elevates the sternum and ribs if the head is stabilized. Here we're looking at one of the large muscles of the back, the trapezius. It has two origins. One is the occipital bone. Two is the spinous processes of vertebral segment C7 all the way down to T12. Because this muscle is so large, it's responsible for several actions. One is elevation of the scapula. Another is upward rotation of the scapula. It also adducts the scapula depresses the scapula, and finally extends the neck. Underneath the trapezius, we find the rhomboids. We're going to look at rhomboid major. It originates on the spinous processes of vertebra T2 to T5 and inserts on the medial border of the scapula. Its primary action is adduction of the scapula. Here we have one of the primary muscles of the back, the latissimus dorsi. 
It originates on the spinous processes of vertebra T6 all the way down to the sacrum and it inserts on the intratrabicular sulcus of the humerus. Now it has several actions. It does a, a deduction of the humerus, it medially rotates the humerus, and extends the arm at the shoulder. Here we have one of the major muscles of the chest, pectoralis major. It's going to originate along the sternum and the medial part of the clavicle and inserts distal to the greater tubercle of the humerus. The actions it performs is flexion of the arm at the shoulder. It does medial rotation of the humerus as well as adduction. Here we're looking at serratus anterior. It's going to originate on ribs 1 through 8 and wrap around to the posterior side and insert on the medial border of the scapula. The action it performs is abduction of the scapula. Rectus abdominis is another major muscle in the abdomen. It originates on the superior ramus of the pubis and inserts from the xiphoid process of the sternum as well as the costal cartilage of ribs five through seven. Its primary action is compression of the abdomen as well as flexion of the vertebral column. Another muscle of the abdomen is the external obliques. They originate on ribs five to 12 and insert on the iliac crest of the ilium as well as the linea alba. Primary actions are flexion of the vertebral column, rotates the vertebral column, and laterally flexes the vertebral column. The interno oblique muscle originates on the iliac crest of the ilium, the inguinal ligament, as well as the thoracolumbar fascia, shown here. The actions include flexion of the vertebral column, it also rotates the vertebral column, and laterally flexes the vertebral column, just like the external obliques. Here we're looking at the internal intercostal muscles. They originate on the superior border of the ribs and then insert on the inferior border of the ribs. They aid in the compression of the thoracic cavity during exhalation. Here we're looking at the external intercostal muscles and they originate on the inferior border of the ribs and insert on the superior border of the ribs, the exact opposite of the internal intercostal muscles. And these are responsible for the expansion of the thoracic cavity during inhalation. The final muscle we'll be talking about is the diaphragm. It originates on the xiphoid process of the sternum, the costal cartilage of ribs 6 through 12, and the lumbar vertebra. The action it performs is it forms the floor of the thorax, and during contraction, it increases the vertical length of the thorax, causing inspiration. And this concludes my presentation on the muscles of the thorax.